wants him to win, right? Well, she's not a very defensive player. I mean, On any given Friday night, you'll find the Fallon family gathered around the kitchen table, a fierce Scrabble game in play. Really, the only people that can win are me and Grandma. And you don't want to get in the middle of this match, especially with Dr. Jim Fallon. He's a steely competitor, even against his own children, Tara and James, and his 93-year-old mother, Jenny. You have rainies. Rainies. Rainies are Egyptian um, princesses. If Scrabble at the Fallons calls for a killer instinct, then Dr. Fallon may just have an edge. As a neuroscientist at the University of California in Irvine, he spent the last 20 years of his 30-year career studying the brains of, well, killers. In reading a lot about your work, I've read it as described as the biological basis for human behavior, mm -hmm. kind of looking inside the brain to perhaps get an understanding of why this person does this or behaves right. like this. Does the brain dictate behavior? You can't just look at a scan and say, I know the character of that person or I know that person's going to be a, you know, a depressed or a killer, but you can make a good guess. And Dr. Fallon has that down to a science, combining the latest in genetics and imaging to create what is essentially a map of the criminal mind. And this massive machine, a PET scan, helps him do it. And this is used to create three-dimensional images of somebody's brain. And they're functional images, so we look at specific areas of the brain that are using a lot of sugar, that are active. That is, what part of the brain are you using for a particular task that we have people do? The task is designed to activate the part of the brain that deals with emotions, ethics, and morality. The scan creates a colored image. Red and yellow indicates the area of the brain that's active. Blue indicates inactivity. Because some areas <clears throat> in people are more active than normal, but other areas are less active. So we can tell higher activity or lower activity. And it's how hard those cells and those circuits, brain circuits, are working for you to do the task. So a low activity, what, what does that tell you? What does that mean? It means that it's just not engaging. In analyzing thousands of brains, more than 70 of them killers, Dr. Fallon's findings are remarkable. The killer's brains all have one thing in common. But each one of them had the same underlying pattern, which is a decrease of activity in the orbital cortex in the front of the temporal lobes. The orbital cortex governs emotions. In a normal brain scan, it's brightly colored, reds and greens. In the killer's brain scan, it's darker, which makes sense. The part of the killer's brain showing abnormally low activity is the very part that helps the rest of us make moral decisions. This is the area of the orbital cortex. Uh, this is actually of a killer's brain. This is a model that oh. was made of, of, a, of a murderer's brain. And you can see on the top here, this upper part, which is right up here, that it's red, meaning it's really working hard. So they're, you know, that's the part that's engaged in cognition, in executive function, so they're really kind of thinking. The area down here, you can see it's turned off, and it should not be turned off in this, this task. Not, this should not no, be No, it should be, it should be yellow and red in this task, and it isn't in this person. And also you see the temporal lobe here, the same thing. So these two areas that are at the bottom of the brain are abnormally low. And that's you find in, you know, most of the killers, uh, the psychopaths. In addition to brain scans, Dr. Fallon looks for genetic patterns, specifically the so-called warrior genes, those associated with aggression and violence. Put the two together, and Dr. Fallon's cutting-edge research suggests some people are hardwired and genetically designed to kill. Or are they? Turns out, Dr. Fallon has become his very own case study for why the answer isn't that simple. Jim, your research in recent years took a very personal turn. Can you tell me about how you and your family personally became involved in, in the research we've been talking about? Yeah, it was kind of a personal, I guess, uh, a, per a perfect storm, if you will. My family became enrolled, there were 10 of us, became enrolled in an Alzheimer's clinical study. My wife's mother and father had recently died of Alzheimer's. So the thought was, what if my wife, okay, uh, had these high-risk alleles for APOE? And so it was really, she uh, was, I think, kind of heroic about the whole thing. So, you know, knowing that she would find out if she had um, a really bad combination of genes. So we went ahead and did it, and I, we got the PET scans and the EEGs, and took bloods for the DNA and did all these psychometric tests. 
and uh, started analyzing them, right? And so the, the Alzheimer's turned out pretty good. So that was a great relief. But I also, looking at the PET scans, and everybody looked normal except one. To get this and other great HDNet programming, call your cable or satellite provider and ask for HDNet.